Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the Shrek Gamer Telecom video, we're going to be discussing rising prices. No, not the CPUs, we did that a day or two ago. Instead, we're going to be focusing squarely on motherboard. After all, you can start pricing up a system if you know the price of the board, the CPU, and the RAM. So, in this video, we're going to be exploring some prices thanks to a leaked series of Asus motherboards on a Australian website known as EO, that's e -Y -O, <coughs> dot com dot au. Now, because these are Australian US dollars, we have to do some conversions, but we'll go into that in just a second. Let's, first of all, talk about the boards that were shown off. So, there are four specific boards, the Asus AM4X370 Crosshair 6 Hero. Uh, the second one is the uh, Asus Prime X370 Pro. And then finally we have the two B boards, which are the B350 Plus and the Prime B350MA. So these boards run the gamut in terms of specifications with the, and we've largely gone through the specifications of Summit Ridge motherboards before, but I just want to highlight some of the features. So the X370 Crosshair Hero features, among other things, one M.2 SSD port, eight USB 3.1s, four USB 2.0s, uh, a front USB 3.1 header, naturally, 8 SATA ports, um, SATA free, obviously, 2-way SLI and 3-way crossfire support, auto and manual overclocking, and built-in AC Wi-Fi. The X370 is probably the better value of the two, we'll go into that in just a second. Uh, it, along with the X370 uh, cross, uh, cross uh, Hero, has isolated DAC and AMP 8-channel audio design, another uh, SSD slot, uh, one, one rather M.2 SSD slot, eight SATA ports again, fewer USB 3.1 ports with only four, which is not that great, but it's enough considering you've also got the front USB header, four USB 2s, RGB lighting, two-way SLI and three-way crossfire, and naturally also automatic uh, auto and manual um, overclocking support, which is phenomenal. But... The really nice thing about these boards is even the B350 does support overclocking. Now, it, I hasten to add, we don't know how much the B350 limits overclocking um, in terms of, like, for manual purposes. So, for example, how much you can uh, fine-tune, how much, um, op how many options, rather, you get for, like, you know, memory timings and whatever else. We'll have to just wait. But, even so, the fact that these boards do support it and they're cheap, like really cheap, and we're going to go into that now. So, I did mention their Australian prices, and the reason I keep bringing that up is because, well, Australia gets gypped when it comes to products. Um, for example, <coughs> test, go to Amazon.com, or co.uk, your choice, and look at the price of an RX 480. Okay. Now, this very same website which lists these particular motherboards has an RX 480 4GB model starting for 300 Australian dollars. And the prices obviously go up. For example, a 8GB model might cost you 370, 400 Australian dollars. In other words, it's considerably more expensive. What that basically means is Australians essentially get at the very least 40% or more tagged on to whatever the US pricing is and there's multiple reasons behind that value added tax although I question the terminology of value um, you've got import fees you've got a currency exchange the, basically it's just not a pretty site and so Australians can pay a significant portion more 50 60 percent is not uncommon therefore obviously we do have a price range for these boards um, but for example, if we were to focus on the, uh, and I'm going to give you the US dollar prices here, the Crosshair 6 Hero is probably going to be around the 200 to 230 US dollars, which is pretty nice. The Prime X370 Pro, about 140, 150 US dollars. And the actual value of the century are the B350s, um, which come in at around 100 US dollars or below. So perhaps let's say 70 to 100 US dollars. Now, obviously, the reason I'm saying around is even if you was to do the currency exchange, you take tax into account, you start taking currency exchange into account, and you, you know, do all of that stuff, you can by all means still imagine that some e-tailers are going to add a little bit of extra uh, on top because that's just naturally how things go. So I'm saying around so you don't, you know, 
bank on like $80 for a particular board and it turns out to be, I don't know, 90 or whatever. Even so, when we factor in this combined with the motherboard, with the processor prices, things get kind of tasty. For example, let's say we take a median of 80 US dollars for one of the B boards, then by all means you could say, well, golly, I'm going to go for the Ryzen 5 1300, which is like four cores, eight threads for 175 US dollars. So for around 100, and, uh, sorry, 250 dollars, you've got yourself a very powerful system. And then obviously you have to throw in whatever amount of DDR4 and its clock speed. Now, as we discussed, we don't know how well Ryzen scales A with memory clocks and B with memory timings, because we just don't have any data on that. And the reason that's important is because obviously faster memory naturally costs more money. But the savings are just ridiculous. I mean, let's say you go for the... <clears throat> let's go with the Ryzen 5 1500, which is 229 US dollars uh, if you do the conversions once again. So it's, it's approximate. But let's say 230 US dollars plus, let's say the motherboard's 150 US dollars that's not bad. You're looking at around the 380, let's say 450 US dollar mark for that combined with, uh, let's say, 16 gigabytes DDR4, and you can start going up the chain. So, for example, the R, sorry, the Ryzen 7 1700, eight cores, 16 threads, 320 US dollars. Let's once again say the motherboard's 140 US dollars, 320. That's uh, 360 ish US dollars. 460 US dollars including the motherboard and then you've got once again the RAM on top of that So you're looking at around the 500 540 US dollars Assuming you do not have any RAM that you can just simply simply excuse me slot into your system And obviously then you can start doing the approximate conversions for Great British Pounds or whatever your region happens to be My personal take on this is it means that the motherboards themselves are not going to be prohibitively expensive. The reason that's important is because it's like if you've got boards which are like 250, 300 Great British Pounds or like 300 to 350 US dollars, just for example, that starts becoming really pricey really fast. For example, the MSI X99 Gaming Pro, which is once again X99 motherboard, is around 300 US dollars. And obviously, it does depend on then the fact you have to factor in the memory and all the other bits and bobs which are associated with that particular uh, platform. And on top of that, then you have the absolute lovely fact of the processor itself, which in some cases can be like a thousand US dollars, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, comparatively, Ryzen should be pretty good in terms of pricing. The biggest issue with this. Uh, whole setup is obviously we don't have the CPUs and all the other bits and bobs available at retail just yet for us to do you know fine-grained analysis and as I keep saying in every video of Ryzen until you actually hear full performance benchmarks you know do hold off on you know buying anything don't purchase anything because ultimately we can't answer questions like how well does it overclock what the sample size is we can't say well you know, what memory to get with the board and all of this stuff. It's good to have a good number of um, a good number of answers. And even things such as, like, what is the best cooler for it? Like, how how aggressively does, let's say, XFR scale with clock speed? I'm sorry, with cooling. Because, you know, if it clocks really well with cooling and, you know, you don't want to be someone who does a lot of manual tuning, there are people like that, you know, you don't really want to delve in and start worrying about multipliers and voltage you just want to be good to go then you by all means might want to say well okay let's see how well those things work you know do i do i want to be that person who goes for like a high water cooling loop or do i just want to go with like an aio or do i just want to stay with a fan so those are definitely questions we have to answer but anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now